have you looked at the comments under the other bug report, the other uh, caching one? Because Nate Graham said the, the funny thing that you are annoyed that people keep bringing up. Um, I haven't seen the bugzilla on that one since... I, I, I saw your video on it. Yeah, it didn't have any comments until my video comments. came out, by the looks of it. Yeah, I haven't hacked the bugzilla since then. I wonder what he said. This is probably an issue we should fix for the benefit of people with a single slow storage disk. But, I have to ask, if you're a technical expert and have multiple options for storage hardware options, would it not make more sense to put the cache on your fastest one rather than a known slow one? <laughs> yeah, yes and. Um, <laughs> so, I, I get where he's coming from. Well, because my In my case, I have my boot drive on my fastest drive because that's what makes yeah. sense to have. Like, it's your fastest drive. Yeah. That makes sense. And to be clear, I do... Or boot and application think, drive, I guess. Yeah. I do think Kwin shouldn't be writing to the home directory for that. They should be writing to slash TMP. <laughs> because, you know, I, I, I don't know how others have, have fared with doing that. But in my case, when I was investigating it, I could just delete my .cache folder. And Kwin wouldn't crash. I wouldn't get any errors. <laughs> I'd just be able to use the effects and the stutters would take less time. And then eventually they would take more time, the bigger the cache got, but it would just recreate the cache. So there's no reason it can't be on a temp file system. Um, and when people say, well, Richie, just put your stuff on a faster hard drive, what, or on a faster drive, what, what they fail to realize is, like Nate Graham said, yeah, there are people who don't have SSDs or NVMe. There's mm. the first gen steam deck which one of the variants had emmc that's gonna be oh, dog slow i forgot about that um and then there's people who have their home directories on a network attached storage device like you said in the video that's mm -hmm. very much a possibility um and not only that but in my case i actually did have it on something faster than a hard drive mm -hmm. i used lvm which is logical volume ma management. It's kind of the kernel's kind of own version of RAID, in a way, where you can take multiple disks and pull them together and treat them as one. Mm -hmm. So in my case, I have two 4 terabyte hard drives and then a 1 terabyte PCI-4 NVMe. And what I was doing was I had one of the 4 terabyte drives in an LVM pool, and I was going to add the other one later on once I got my data on it. Mm -hmm off of Windows, um, but in front of that I had a 1 terabyte NVMe cache in front of it. So it should not have been that slow, but my mistake was that my, my LVM cache pool was full because I was transferring data off of Windows and I should have flushed it. Mm -hmm. um, but there are people who do that. LVM is, there is a reason that the Arch Wiki literally uses your home directory as, a, as an example of how to set up LVM, because that's a valid use case for LVM. It is reasonable to have people pull spinning hard drives together and mm -hmm. optionally put an SSD cache in front of it. That's a thing you are able to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that there's any reason why my compositor should hang for several seconds because I did that. Well, that's the that's other big the question. Issue. I don't know why it's hanging. It's one thing that it's pulling in the data. I don't know why yeah. it's hanging because of it. That's the weird part. And someone's obviously going to have to look into it. But my theory, just based on being a game dev and seeing similar things happening in Socially Distant, mm -hmm. um, obviously a game engine and a Wayland compositor are sure. going to have a lot of parallels. They're doing a lot of the same things. Uh with rendering and stuff like that. You're going to have a render loop, you're going to have a main thread, and if you block that main thread, you're going to cause those hangs. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. And I suspect what's happening is maybe they are loading from the disk on another thread, mm -hmm. but they're waiting for that data to come in on the main thread, because they mm -hmm. have to. Um, and while waiting, they're just not doing anything productive. Sure. They're not rendering frames, they're not... They're just waiting, and mm -hmm. whether it be because they are they are blocking, waiting for the disk data to come in, or they just 
are, uh, are spinning the thread because the data hasn't come in yet and they expect it to come in relatively quickly. Who can say? But the point is, at the very least, it should still be pumping out frames. Mm -hmm. It should still let you move your mouse and and type on the keyboard and it should be reading keyboard input and stuff like that to be able to maybe the tiling editor does take five seconds to come up but it actually comes up right right well yeah my the, the issue that bothered me the most is i would open up the tiling editor and it wouldn't open but i think yeah. i think what I, I mentioned this in my video i think what was actually happening is it opened, but it read a second key press, and pressing the key to open it was also the key to close it. So it seems yeah. like during that issue where it locked up, it must have rendered it and then, like, removed it afterwards. I, I It's hard to say because I don't have, like, specific, you know, action-by-action action logs, but that's the, the most logical thing I can think of. And you're absolutely right. That's exactly what it is doing. Um, I actually told you that's what it was doing, and mm -hmm. Xaver Hugel told me that's what it was oh, doing, I, I, and we confirmed it. Oh, he did confirm it? I didn't um, know he, was, he actually confirmed that. I thought it was just a theory. Yeah. Um, it, it does do... It, it, if you hold down the tiling editor key right now, it mm -hmm. will open, and then it will close, and then it'll come back. Um, sometimes. Uh, it's being <laughs> sometimes. temperamental on my system. Um, <laughs> but, you know... If you hold the key down for a second or so, it will close it. And mm -hmm. what's happening is it's not reading two key presses. Mm -hmm. What's actually happening is you press it, mm -hmm. then Kwin hangs. Mm -hmm. and by the time it comes back up, it just hasn't registered that you've let go of it. And it thinks it's still held down. So it goes and immediately closes it because to it, you've held it down for that long. And unfortunately, that's a very common bug in in game development mm -hmm. when you're doing streaming and disk io if you block the main thread all of your delta time calculations are they're going to be thrown off by that because to the game engine it's going to go oh the last frame took five seconds to render <laughs> right and and it, it causes weird issues with like that with keyboard mm -hmm. input and and unfortunately it's it's what's happening. It's just the reality of it. Unfortunately, I don't know what they'll need to do to fix it. Um, if it were a game, I would just say split the load operation across multiple frames and keep rendering frames. But I don't, I, I don't know enough about how it works to say definitively how they'll fix it. Yeah, I, I hope they do. I don't know if yeah that that seems like it's going to be a lot more of an issue to fix. I think the best thing they can probably do is just get QML onto RAM, stick it in temp, yeah. it shouldn't be getting uh, dumped. Like, the, the folder in in cache that it's specifically using is called QML cache. Like, they have a specific folder just for QML. That folder should probably be in your temp. Yeah. And and I, I, I get why they're caching it, because um, when you're doing QML... Or really any markup language. Ultimately, you're gonna have, you're gonna need to parse it, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna need to turn it into something that's renderable. And it's a good idea to cache that result, so you don't have to do that computation every time. But it shouldn't be cached to the disk. Well, um, it, it, it seems like they're still doing the computation every time, though. That's that's what's weird to me. Like every time you do the effect, it's being reloaded, and so it. I, it seems to me like they're doing that computation every time. So I, I don't know... I don't know what the logic is behind caching it to the disk anyway, if, if you're not going to be reusing it. I don't know either. And I honestly don't know enough about the code to really understand why I need to look at it and then the fix understand that, what the code's doing. The fix that you suggested with putting um the whole KWIN folder on TempFS, I would... The only reason I, I wouldn't directly recommend that is i don't know what else kwin is putting in like the whole kwin folder and i don't know if there's possibly something in there you'd want to survive between boots because i've noticed yeah. that by moving my my entire cache folder um apparently zsh doesn't like its history file existing on a sim link so my zsh history broke um in cache yeah i look i, I that's that's where i've i've had it for a long time 
Um, I I've moved it to my like directly to my home directory. Um, but ZSH has like a a, a variable to let you select, uh, set location. Um, that's the only thing I've seen break because of it. Everything else, to the best of my knowledge, is fine. I thought that maybe browsers did a bit of stuff, a bit of caching there, but they seem to do their caching a bit differently. Um, so that seems to have been fine. Like I, I initially deleted my entire cache folder just to see what would happen, and nothing broke. Like I, I did it when Kwin was running, so nothing yeah. broke. Which is good. But I haven't extensively tested everything that uses like uses the Kwin folder to say whether or not you'd want that to be going through boots. You were saying that it's it's been fine, but yeah, I don't know if it's always gonna be fine for every situation though. Yeah. 